Hey, so welcome, and this is my first system design video. So today I thought we would design Spotify, uh, which I've actually gone asked in an interview before. And so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start with a million users and we're going to have about 100 million songs. And so the only use case that we're going to look at is search as well as playing a song. And so we just want to design our system to fulfill uh, these two uh, like functionalities. Okay, so now there is one other video on here on YouTube that um, does the uh, same problem here and I'm gonna pull a little bit of their ideas as well as well as um, some that I did uh, during my own interview. So essentially if we do um, some of the data math here just it's called back of the envelope uh, estimation and so typically um, what we want to think of is okay if we're dividing or designing Spotify, uh, we're going to want to store the MP3s or this data, this uh, this music um, for all these hundred million songs here. And so, basically, you can assume if you Google it, uh, the first thing that popped up is like each MP3 has around like five point five uh, megabytes on average of data that it has to store. So. We're going to round it down to five and multiply it by our 100 million songs. And so it's basically five megabytes uh, times 100 million. And so that's going to end up being about uh, uh, 500 uh, terabytes here. Okay, and so what we're also going to want to store is not only just the MP3 itself, but maybe some metadata about that particular song. And so that might be around 100 bytes, I think they actually use in the video, which um, seems relatively reasonable. And so that times uh, 100 million here um, will end up being about uh, 10 uh, gigabytes of data, I believe. So it's about 100 uh, bytes multiplied by our 100 million songs. Great. And so with that, we're also going to want to store some data about these particular users. And so that's good because all these songs are created by users, kind of like how Instagram, um, the photos are created by users for on a particular account. And so we're going to want to store metadata about like the users that created these particular songs or just users that are listening to songs. And so what that's going to be is, okay, we might store, and I think in the video they showed uh, one byte or a, not one byte, one um, kilobyte. So about 100 or 1,000 bytes here. So one kilobyte or uh, 1,000 bytes of data for each user. So we're gonna multiply that by uh, 1 million users here. And so that's gonna end up being just uh, one gigabyte, I believe. We go 1,000 times a million. So it goes byte, megabyte, and then gigabyte. So or it goes kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, so that makes sense. Okay, so this is kind of our, our data math, and this is just so we have some idea of the amount of data that we're gonna be storing, um, so we can kind of design uh, the system accordingly. And so with that, uh, what we're gonna do here is typically just the rough sketch or the high level design of our system. And so you would usually have your app for Spotify. Okay, so this could be like a mobile app for example, which often can store you know, internally uh, some of its own information, say if you want to download a song or something. And so its traffic will route it to a load balancer, and this is kind of just templated design here. Um, as your system scales, you're going to want to distribute uh, that load so that not all the uh, traffic is being routed to one particular uh, web server here. And so then we're going to have basically a web server here, but really a fleet of them essentially. And so this is basically going to be the fleet of web servers that this load balancer is going to be distributing uh, the load to. And then from here, our web server is going to be querying um, or pulling data from essentially two data stores. And so this is what they do in the uh, video that I'm referring to. Um, I'll add the link in the description. But I also did my own uh, video or in my own um, interview. And that's that you want to split the data that you're storing across two data stores, okay? And so the one on the left is going to be storing 
essentially the user data as well as the metadata. So just write out uh, maybe in text here, user and metadata. Okay, and so let's just move this down and make this a bit smaller. Throw that here. So this is all the user data and metadata, but then we're gonna have a separate data store uh, on the other side maybe. And this is going to be essentially storing that MP3 data. So the actual um, songs themselves. And so I'll just write out song here, song. Great. And so for particular technologies that you're actually using um, to store this data, like this would be a, a SQL data store, uh, something like Postgres or MySQL. Well, this would be more of a blob data store. And um, typically you would think of uh, like AWS or GCP and some of the services that they uh, supply. So this in AWS language would be like S3. And for AWS for this, this is probably going to be RDS probably not a data warehouse, but more um, a uh, OLTP ones, such as like MySQL or Postgres that I mentioned before. And so this is pretty much the high level design. So a typical user flow would be that the user has their app. Um, when they make a search, they're routed to a load balancer uh, to a particular web server. And then when they're searching for a, a song, it's then uh, that request is then routed to a SQL uh, database where it's been basically going to be selecting um, whatever you're typing out at the moment and all those uh, range of songs. It would then return the particular song um, that you might want to play. And so then in order to play it, um, you would actually in this schema for this database, you would expect something such as like the name of the song, uh, the also maybe the author name, but then also you're going to expect not only this information and like the date and so forth, but also a basically a, a link to the actual uh, MP3 file stored in S3. So it might be like the actual S3 link um, itself in order to access um, that particular song. So that way you can retrieve that song here and then go ahead and request it um, in a second call. Okay, and so for actually playing or streaming this data, um, I didn't really know how to solve this, but what they did in the video was they said that because the a song is only about five megabytes in size, we'll return that and store it essentially on this web server and then so that five megabyte file will be on this web server. And then from here, you can actually stream it chunk by chunk to the particular application. Um, I don't know if S3 has any logic itself for dealing with those particular scenarios. I'm not sure how to do it. Um, but for me, it's high level enough. I, uh, it's not my area of expertise. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the high level design. So maybe as you scale to maybe 100 million users. So and this is the same thing that I got asked before is, okay, now what if we had 100 million users? So then our basically data store here um, would actually need to expand. And so in that case, I believe we had 1,000 bytes about each user. And so now this is 100 million. So this is about 100 gigabytes of data. Okay, but you know, they could easily ask something more like, okay, what about a billion users? And in that case, you're now dealing with a terabyte size um, RDS data store. Okay, and so in that scenario, uh, typically you'd want to think about, okay, how would we want to deal with this increased traffic? Because the number of like plays per second, um, as well as searches and the amount of data in this data store has drastically um, increase. So what I quickly thought of was caching. And this is what they do in the video where, okay, generally when you think of S3 and how to distribute um, and increase the load on it is you can actually use a, a CDN here. And I believe CloudFront um, is the actual AWS uh, service for this. And so in that case, whenever you're making requests uh, to this S3 data store, 
you could then be routed to a CDN instead that might be uh, geolocated close to the particular web server. And so then it's much faster for retrieving, say, very popular songs like Michael Jackson songs or uh, anything else. Okay, and so what else can we do? Well, um, generally when you're dealing with SQL databases and something like this where, especially for since we're only designing a limited set of services, is you want to think about, okay, we're going to get a lot more reads than writes in this case. And in order to handle that, uh, generally, especially kind of the legacy system design problems is they say, okay, uh, you can uh, basically expand this data store and so that then you have a, a master uh, uh, database where it'll handle all the writes and then its reads will then be re replicated to different uh, worker data stores. And so you might have three in this case, worker one, worker two, and worker three. And so when these uh, web servers are uh, making a request, they're going to be routed to a particular uh, read um, worker node rather than the writes. And if you had to expand the functionality here, say like, okay, what well, if you want to upload a song, then those uploads will be routed to this kind of write uh, master data store. Okay, and so I think that's pretty much it for now. I think as I progress and I make more of these videos, I'll go uh, maybe deep dive into uh, certain areas such as the load balancer or uh, maybe how uh, the web servers work. But um, yeah, I think this is about it for now and um, I hope it helps. So thanks for watching and feel free to follow for more. Thanks.